Hi everyone, this is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bellos Designs. Today we're going to work on a project where we use several different masking techniques. Um, one of the things that I really especially wanted to show you today was using the Peebo drawing gum. Now I normally make my designs ahead of time and today I was just too excited to play with my new stamp so we're just going to go with the flow of making this design free-handedly without having planned it out ahead of time. So let's start out with the products that we're going to use as supplies uh, on this particular project. We'll start out with our paper which will be the Lavinia Multifarious Smooth and Supreme. I have taken the A6 size and cut it down. My size will be four and three quarter inches by three and a half inches. We're also going to use the Lavinia stamps. Um, I've got three of them that we're going to use today. Two of them are, the, are from the brand new sets. The first one is the Liberty, the little boat. It is LAV712. Then we're going to use King Hopkins. He is LAV724. And then we're going to use the Willow, which is LAV173. The masking products that we're going to use today, we'll start out with, we're going to use a two inch circle to make a moon mask. We'll be using the masking tape to mask out some of the thing parts that we don't want from our stamp that we're going to use and then we're going to use the Peebo drawing gum. This I just used this for the first time a couple of weeks ago and I love it and I can't wait to show you the ways that you can use this that will rock your world. It's going to be awesome. The colors that we're going to use are Distress Oxide inks. We will use Candied Apple, Abandoned Coral, Picked Raspberry, Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and then for a little bit of shading we will use the Chip Sapphire. We will also need to have a few little tools uh, to use like uh, just a brush. This will help us putting our gum, drawing gum, onto the paper. You'll also want to have either a brush, blending brush of some kind, or I have my little daubers here that I also use. I'm also going to go ahead and use some of my colored pencils uh, for part of this particular design. We will color in the boat. When we put our project together, we will use our adhesive runner's tape to attach the frame and the card to the art to the card base. We're also going to use our stamping platform. Mine is a Tim Holtz stamping platform. This one I like because you can turn it over for both sides whether you have um, the clear stamps that you're going to use. It has an option for clear stamps or if you turn it over if you've got rubber stamps you can use that as well. But since all of our stamps today are clear, we're going to leave it on the clear side. We're also going to use our um, water mister. Today's project is going to include using um, the daubing technique where you put your inks down on a piece of glass and spray it with water and uh, smoosh your paper around on top of that. We may also end up using our Sakura Jelly Roll Glitter Pen and our Fine Tip Black Pen if needed. So now we are ready to get started on our project. So I'm going to start out by showing you a few things that we can do with the Peebo gum, drawing gum. Um, here's an example of where I did the stamp down and put the Peebo gum, as I'll show you how to do here in a few minutes, on top of the mushrooms and then stamped my mouse so that it appears that he's actually standing behind it. Then when we, re we remove the uh, Peebo 
drawing gum, then you can see that uh, it, it makes it, as a, as a masking technique, that makes it really cool for putting things behind the item that you've got on there. Makes it a little bit easier to me than cutting out a, a piece of sticky paper or post-it note or something like that to get your design of your mushrooms down first. I also did this one that way. This one I put the gum on the house because I wanted to make sure that I had a white background to do my coloring. And I knew that when I did the uh, smooshing technique to do the, the sky background on this one that it would muddle the colors that I was going to attempt to um, do with the, the coloring on the house. So that will be part of what I show you today as well. So what we're going to start out with is we would start out by doing our boat. So let me get the boat acetate sheet out so that we can line up how we'd like our design to be. So what I have decided is that with the king, I want him to be where he is not covering up or is not covered up by the flowers. So when I put him in my boat, the leaves and the flowers would get in the way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is decide approximately where I want this to be stamped. Then I'm going to take my tape and just lay it down across my paper. And I've actually got this just a little bit more at an angle than I want. So I'm going to do that. So that when I actually do some stamping, what I'm going to get is the boat without the leaves and the flowers. Because we're going to use our ferns in this particular project. I'm going to go ahead and continue to tape off the area that we don't want any ink to go on. And it looks like there's just a little bit of that flower bud that's going to come down. So I will put that right there. So now when I'm ready to go ahead and do the stamping for my boat, those parts won't show up. So I'm going to put this in the place where I want it. And then we will be ready to go ahead and stamp. So I will take my archival ranger ink and put the ink on my stamp. And now we will stamp it down. And let's take a look. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and do one more little bit. Looks like I missed a little bit of the top of my boat there. So I'm going to go ahead and re-ink it up. and press down to get a good impression. All right. So now we are ready to go ahead and remove the tape. So as you can see, I have my little boat there now without the flowers across the top. But we're going to make up for that when we do our ferns. So the next step that we would want to do would be to go ahead and put 
our king in the boat. This is where we're going to use the Peebo drawing gum. The great thing about this is you can just mask off just the areas that you like. Now if you look at the instructions on the drawing gum, it does tell you that it's best to go ahead and put wash your brush with soap and then instead of washing the soap off then you would um, just wipe it off. So what you will then do is take this and just paint over where you want it to be masked out. I'm going to actually go ahead and paint over the entire boat because I would also like to use my color pencils to color it in and I don't want whatever my background ends up being to interfere with the colors that I'm going to be using. The nice thing is that it shows up as a little light blue color so you can see where you've put the art gum, the drawing gum. What this does is it puts a coating on top. It doesn't mess up or hurt your design. It it'll, will roll off when we're done with it, when we're ready to remove it. You just basically just peel it off and I'll show you how we will do that. So, got the boat. Put a little extra right there because that's where part of our King Hopkins is going to be. And so we want to make sure that he really looks like he's inside the boat. All right. And that will take just a couple minutes, not very long, for it to dry. And actually, I, th I think what I'm going to do, I can do two different things, but I think what I would like to do is go ahead and use this to make the dividing line between where I'm going to have the water show up and the horizon. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just fill out the whole bottom portion of the card. Looks like I got a little bit of fuzz there. Let me see if I can get that off. All right. So we will just cover that whole area up. And the reason being is I'm going to be using different colors for my background, sky part portion of it, and the water portion of it. Okay, so now we, oops, let's get that just a little bit higher up there. There. All right, I am going to go ahead and grab my paper towel. I want to go ahead and get the water and clean my brush off before it gets too stiff with the art gun. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that off so that we don't have to worry about that part while it's this is drying just a little bit. All right. And we can kind of actually see why they recommend that you do the uh, soap because it doesn't come off quite as easily with just the water. So I will have to clean my brush really, really well. I should have gone ahead and dipped it in the soap before we started the process. Okay, so now what I want to do with this is I'm going to want to have the background appear like it's going to be the end of the day, so sunset. Um, and I'm going to want to use the colors that are like sunset. So what I'm going to do is take my abandoned coral, my candied apple, and my picked raspberry. And I'm going to go ahead and scoot this over just a little bit so that you will be able to see just a little bit better here. Um, over here I am going to take my ink pads, 
just rub a little bit in there. of my three colors, the picked raspberry, the candied apple, and the abandoned coral. I'm going to go ahead and take my card off of the base, since I have masked out the parts that I want masked out. I'm going to take my water bottle, and I'm going to spritz the water over where I put down the different colors of the ink. I'm now going to take my card face down and basically just rub it around. To pick up the colors of the sunset. Alright, sorry about that. I did want to go ahead and get my dryer. I did not have it right beside me. That makes it go a whole lot faster. We can also grab our paper towel and do some dabbing if we want it to dry a little bit faster. I'm going to put down a little bit more of the picked raspberry. I want some more pinks in there. Spray that up. And we'll do a little bit more dabbing and swirling around. the thing of the uh, process you can just do it until you like what you see if you get into it and you think oh I need a little bit more color that's fine you can get a little bit more color what I'm seeing here is that I've got a lot of pink now because I put that in for a second time so I'm gonna go ahead and actually clean up my surface and maybe put in oh let's say some it's a candied apple. Let's do a little bit of that. That gives it more of a reddish orange. I'm just going to dab it around until I can see what kind of effect I'm getting. looks a little messy now but when we get to the final product it won't look so messy this is always to me a very messy kind of technique but it's just so much fun because you never know what you're going to get all right i think let's see what shall we add more, more do a little bit more abandoned coral Also, if you'd like to take your brush, <clears throat> excuse me, take your paintbrush, pick up a little bit of color with that, blend it in a little bit in the spots that you might have missed that you might want just to have a little bit more color. All right, and then I always love the effect that you get when you just kind of spritz on top of it. 
let your spots sink in for just a little bit. And then take a paper towel and just daub a little bit. It gives you a little bit of texture there. All right, so now we have got a background that kind of looks like the sun setting there. So now I'm going to go ahead and get ready to do the portion down here for our water. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this up so we don't get colors where we don't want it to be. Now I'm ready to gently peel away the art gum. And basically I'm just rolling it up and it peels off of the card. Looks like I missed a few spots around the bottom of the card. But that's okay because we will cover it up with the watercolors. Now, as you can see, as I'm peeling this up off of the boat, my boat is still white, so that way I have a nice clean palette for when I'm ready to start my coloring. Now, my art gum also got a little bit outside of the edge of where I, I like my design to be. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my ink and blend it in right around the spots. So there now we have our boat ready to be colored in and our water ready to be inked up. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my boat off of the platform. I'm going to go ahead and place this back down for the moment. And we'll start out with go doing our, our moon mask first. So I'm going to go ahead and put the moon down. And I'm going to go ahead and take the candied apple so that we can create the aura with our candied apple. And I'm just going to hold the moon in place, the moon mask, and gently flick around the edges. And so I've got my moon now in the background. So now at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and color my boat. So what we're going to want is for the king to be sitting in the boat. So obviously we can use our tape or a piece of paper down on the bottom parts. So around here. But we've got we've got this up here. So when we start to do our stamp on it, obviously these parts that are still exposed are going to get stamped up. So we're going to go back to our art gum. And just go ahead and repaint over where you've done your coloring. With the art gum. That way it's going to appear like he is in the boat when you do your stamping. And you don't have to worry then about trying to put it on 
post-it note paper or something like that and then cut around the edges because this is actually going to cover up the space, the places that you don't want the ink to go. All right. So we get that to dry for just a moment or two while we're cleaning off our brush again. Let it dry just a moment. It doesn't take very long at all. And now we're going to go ahead and position him into his boat. So I line up my stamp where I want it to be. Close that up to make sure it sticks to our stamp pad and then ink up our stamp. Now I'm not going to have to worry about inking putting my ink down there at the bottom since all I'm really wanting is his top half. One of the things I could have done if I wanted to is I could have actually gone ahead and stamped him before I ever put any color in the background. But this way works perfectly well. So now we're going to get him in our boat. And it looks like I've got just a little bit more down at the bottom of him, but I am going to go ahead and clean up my stamp so that we don't get ink in a spot where we don't want it. So I've just taken a baby wipe and I keep it in a piece of cellophane that way it keeps it damp while I'm working on my project. So I'm going to just clean up my stamp just a little bit before I re-ink it up. And by keeping this in the cellophane it keeps it damp throughout the whole project. It doesn't dry out in case I need to use it again. So we'll put just a touch more ink on. And ink him up. So now we're ready to go ahead and remove our mask. So as you can see, I just peeled off the art gun and it looks like he is sitting nicely in the boat. If you feel like you need to touch up any of the the, the color pencil. You can just go over it real quickly. If the art gum does peel up just a tiny little bit of it. All right. And now we are ready to go ahead and do the water part and fill in the color on our King Hopper uh, Hopkins. All right, so for the water portion, I'm going to go ahead and use the Mermaid Lagoon and the Peacock Feathers. And then we will do some darker spots in with our chip sapphire. I'm going to go ahead and start out, I guess, let's go ahead and start with a little bit of the peacock feathers. I'm going to take that and just basically go back and forth. The reason I want to go back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and take this off 
since we're done with that particular stamping part, we'll come back to it in just a few minutes. Set this aside while we do our inking. So I'm just going to run it back and forth sideways so that it gives us more of an effect of water flowing side to side. Whereas if we do circles like we normally do when we're trying to do some blending, um, that won't give the uh, effect that we really want to get. So let's just kind of... And I'm going to move to some of the Mermaid Lagoon. And then with my chip sapphire, I'm going to take just this little bit smaller dauber. And we'll blend some of the chip sapphire. One of the things I also like to do with chip sapphire is I like to give just a little bit of a framed area. Around the outside edge of my card. We'll go ahead and put our little bit of framing around the outside edge. All right. Now, I think what I would like to do is go ahead and get just a little bit of an effect of some clouds in the background. Kind of floating over across the sun as it's going down. So I'm just going to take a little piece of scrap paper, tear a few little hills and valleys in it, and then we will just put in just a little bit of a, an effect of the clouds. I'm going to go ahead and use my chip sapphire, but I'm not going to re-ink it. I think I just want to barely flick it across there just to get the hint of the clouds. I don't know if you can see it very well or not. I may have to ink it up just a little bit. But I don't want it to be super dark. I just want it to give the effect of some clouds floating across.
maybe a little bit across the top here. All right. And I'm just going to take that and smooth just a little bit. All right, so he's looking pretty good there. Now let's go ahead and put in, we've got the ferns. He's going to be more like he's going down the river. So we're going to have some of the willow branches coming down on top of him. Let's go ahead and, whoops, I picked up something there. There we go. Go ahead and put him back down onto our stamping platform. And get a few of these branches to come down. All right. So we will scoop that over, get our branch all stamped up, inked up. Go ahead and give him a little second generation lighter version of that particular fern right there. Alright. So now we have got him floating down the river with his ferns coming down. Alright, and so let's do a few final touches. We want to go ahead and color him in with the green. So let's go ahead and add just a tiny little bit of sparkle to him and to the water. We want the water to show that it's the sparkling water. 
I don't know if you can see the glitter pen real well. There we go, kind of get it to show where we've put a little bit of that and we'll put a few little little glimmers in the water. There we go. And of course, I think his scepter needs to have a little sparkle to it as well. And we'll put a little bit of glitter on his crown as well. I think he needs to have sparkles in his crown as well. He needs that to look kingly. We go. So now I think we will go ahead and get our card put together. So let's go ahead and finish our card out now. I have cut a piece of cardstock. This one is five inches by three and three quarter inches. That will be our frame that we will place him on. Then for the cardstock, I took an eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock and I cut it in half. So that it ended up with eight and a half by five and a half. And then just folded that over to make our card base. So I'm going to go ahead and let me clean this up just a little bit so I don't get ink all over my card. Wipe that up. And then we will just take our tape runner. Let me close that lid on that ink. Take our tape runner, put it along the edges, and apply it to our frame. Then we're going to do the same thing. Do our running tape. And there we have our King Hopkins using our masking technique. So um, I recommend that you get the Peebo Drawing Gum. You can get this on the Del Bellis website. Uh, it's great for masking out, especially small areas that are hard to uh, just mask off with tape or with paper. I hope that you'll give it a try. Uh, the, the drawing gum is, like I said, I love it. It's a great thing. You can use on so many different ways of masking off things on your projects. I hope that this was helpful to you and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day.